Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this presentation, we'll be covering the concept of blood flow restriction training and what its role in athletic training is. Before we explore how to implement this type of training, we first need to understand what blood flow restriction training is. Essentially, it is when we tie a band or a cuff around a limb during some form of exercise. And this will restrict the blood flow to and from the muscles of that limb that are working during the exercise. Minerals and nutrients are transported around the body to every cell almost entirely via the bloodstream. So if we restrict how much blood can get to our muscles, less nutrients are able to be supplied. With relation to exercise, one of these nutrients carried in the blood is oxygen. Therefore, during exercise, not as much oxygen, which can be abbreviated as O2, can be delivered to the muscles. This causes a long list of physiological alterations which hinder the muscle's ability to perform at a high level. To name a few, reduced oxygen to the working muscles will reduce the rate of energy production, reduce the rate of metabolite clearance, and therefore increase the accumulation of metabolites in the muscle. It is not so important to understand exactly what happens at a physiological level, but more important to understand the outcome. Ultimately, absolute performance will be reduced across almost every single quality. And also, submaximal performance will still be able to be performed, however, it will require an increased effort compared to when blood flow is not restricted. So basically, when blood flow is restricted, it may take the same effort to perform 50% of your capacity as it would to perform at your usual 80% capacity when not restricted. So from what we've said so far, this type of training sounds completely negative with no applications to real world athletic training. However, there may be particular situations where blood flow restriction training can be useful. The benefit of blood flow restriction training comes from the fact that the muscles can receive a training stimulus while the joints can be loaded to a far lesser degree. This stimulus may not be quite as beneficial as traditional loading, but it can still provide enough to create adaptation and get a training effect. Although it is probably unnecessary for the healthy population, it is the injured athletes or trainees that can benefit most from blood flow restriction training. So while an injury is healing, blood flow restriction training can be used within the rehabilitation process to continue training without irritating the injury. I should add that blood flow restriction training is not the only strategy for athlete rehabilitation, and it should be used when necessary and in conjunction with other strategies to return the athlete back to competitive sport, or to return the trainee to the level of performance that they're after. To illustrate the use of blood flow restriction training for an injured individual, here is an example of how this can be implemented into a theoretical scenario. Let's say we have someone who is having pain in their knee, and they can no longer perform their regular training. If this person simply stops training until the injury is healed, they will become detrained. Upon investigating this person, they also claim that whenever they squat above 60% of their one rep max, their knee begins to be irritated. So 60% may be the threshold by which symptoms are triggered. Squatting less than 60% can still allow some strength and hypertrophy to be maintained, provided that the repetitions are taken very close to failure. And this is one strategy that can be used. Another strategy that can be used in conjunction with manipulating the volume and intensity of training is to add some bands or cuffs to cause a blood flow restriction. This will allow loads of less than 60% to be used while still challenging the muscles to a similar extent than if the load was above 60%. Simultaneously, the knee won't be irritated as the joint is not loaded heavy enough. So while the injury is healing, blood flow restriction training can be used to create a strength and hypertrophy adaptation rather than the injury causing detraining. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.